Hello, I'm Asif Farouk of Finextra and I'm here with Vincent Brennan, Head of Group Operations and Payments for the Bank of Ireland and Interim Deputy Chair for the EBA. Vincent, thank you for joining us. So the Electronic Alternative Payment Working Group replaces the older Cash Displacement Working Group which looked at retail payments in Europe. What's the policy roadmap? Um, so in its initial work, the working group uh, amassed a considerable array of research in the whole area in order to help the board and its members understand the developments taking place in the area of alternative payments. And that took us through probably to the end of, of 2013. In 2014, what we've looked to do is to translate that research into some valuable opinion papers for members, including two which we published for EBA Day, the first on emerging alternative payments and the second on digital identity. And in the autumn, what we hope to do is move on to translate uh, that work in terms of what banks could do into some further work, particularly in the area of the implications for payments infrastructures and how they need to be developed out in order to fulfil some of the needs that are, are uh, identified in the earlier papers. Okay, Vincent, why do you think it's been so hard to get rid of cash? I think some of the um, traditional arguments are well aired in terms of you know, the cultural barriers to moving cash, the fact that cash is anonymous, and a whole variety of reasons uh, through which consumers and business have an attachment to it. But I think the piece that we've identified through our research is that banks aren't as well armed as we would have thought in terms of a range of payment propositions to fill the many needs or the many payment types that customers actually use cash for. Now that's improving in terms of the emergence of you know, mobile payments, uh, contactless, etc. Um, and what's also evident is that many non-traditional players are filling the inconvenience gaps that banks had left in not having those propositions. A lot of that's really happening in the, the channel space uh, where um, propositions are provided to enable consumers make payments in a variety of uh, e-commerce e and e-commerce experiences. And I guess what it's opened up is banks need to start to play in that space as well so that they can expand the range of payment propositions and pro provide a wider array that then enables us to uh, really tackle cash. Okay, and um, can you give us some insights into this 2020 vision? Yeah, over the last couple of years, the EBA board and the association has broadened its remit out from a very narrow focus, important focus a number of years ago on ACH payments to recognise that the needs of our, our customers are changing along two dimensions. So if we look at our corporate and business customers, we're seeing the emerging demand for e-invoicing services and supply chain finance services. So they've become a major focus for work groups at the board and, and, and a lot of value being added there. And equally in the whole area of innovation in the retailer and consumer payment space, we've started to explore, for example, electronic and alternative payments and e-identity. So I guess the vision for 2020 is that banks need to play a much wider role in that wider spectrum of uh, the payments arena and we're uh, intent that the EBA will continue to provide thought leadership in that space, to provide education services to its members and through forums such as EBA Day provide a, a vehicle or a, or a community engagement around those topics um, such that we can make Vision 2020 a reality.